Blap, 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 blap. Oh! Shit. Vex down! Vex down! My king. My boy, Jamon Saord. The plate is with a demon called Xerxes Ilares. Mm hmm. Xerxes? What? Excuse me? Critical Role's animated series, The Legend of Vox Machina, is finally back with its third season. And honestly, guys, this actually might be the best season yet. What up, my fellow tabletop and D&D nerds? I am Finn. Welcome back to Finn Films. Those of you who have watched my videos or are familiar with my content know that I am a longtime Critical Role fan and a D&D fantasy nerd. I've done all sorts of content related to like D&D fantasy critical role from like D&D horror stories to like critical role episode breakdowns to even like breakdowns of all sorts of really deep themes and storytelling kind of plot lines in a Legend of Vox Machina. Today though I am going to be reacting to and discussing the Legend of Vox Machina season 3 episode 2 and wowzers was this a great episode filled with some absolutely stunning amazing scenes of animations and one of the wildest easter eggs and references I've ever seen so far from like any episode of the three seasons of this show so far just to know guys before we start if you do enjoy this video learn something new please make sure you like comment and subscribe as that is the easiest way to support me and help put these videos into the algorithm don't forget to check out my reactions to season 3 episode 1 of Legend of Vox Machina which I link in the eye above as well as at the end of the video as well I will be pausing this video potentially pretty frequently to try to catch all of the Easter eggs uh, in this series as well as to go over all of the uh, you know different themes and references to campaign uh one as i am a massive critical role fan so it's fun to kind of talk about like all of the themes and references everything uh from the dungeons and dragons campaign and without further ado uh, let's just get into it uh legend of vox machina season three episode two so obviously last time we had the big reveal with ripley at the end collecting the uh the vestiges as well we had uh we learned you know, we learned about thordak's plan Right, so oh, dude, I love. Oh my gosh, I love the scenes of uh, Orthax, the Revenge Demon Man. They made it look so sick in this show. So Percy's gotten taken hostage, right? And uh, Ripley has like a bunch of vestiges. Now, yeah, and obviously Orthax wants his soul. Oh God, Percy, we got ourselves in a bit of trouble here. Yeah, Percy, come on. I mean, Ripley's kind of like the mirror of Percy in many ways. Like, she is the much less moral version of Percy, but they are very similar. Yes, and Ripley is the reason why, you know, guns get proliferated throughout, you know, Emon. But at the end of the day, or out, uh, Exandria, at the end of the day, though, it is Percy's fault. Oh, is this a new intro? Do we get a new, a new intro? I don't think it showed us the intro in episode one. We gotta watch the whole intro, man. Yes, Raven Queen. We got Percy's and the guns. Ripley. Okay, it is a new intro. Actually, this might have been from the trailer. We might have seen this in the trailer, actually. Keyleth, obviously, and her fears for, like, uh, you know, everything that's going on. Keyleth afraid to lose all of her close loved ones. I love all the little references to most of the characters' stories. You know, the personal stories throughout the intro. Maybe less so with Grog, because Grog's, like, personal story is kind of already done at this point, after he got the knuckles and dealing with Kev Dog. Oh! Ruidus! Okay, a little, little Ruidus shout-out to all my Campaign 3 homies out there. That's sick. Boom! This is a sick shot. Again, the animations in this show continue to dazzle me man there are so many beautiful scenes of animation in this i love the little ruidus shout there pa obviously pike and the plate of the dawn martyr which we're currently trying to get in these episodes a little vecna teaser too hit us with a little vecna teaser raven queen again vax raven queen great intro great intro i think i actually prefer this intro to the other intros we've seen so far in uh the season that was a sick intro back in on Corel. So Scanlan's trying to go make amends with his daughter after the uh, the big blow up in season two. Well, basically him finding out that he even has a daughter. Scanlan's story is great in the campaign, man. Uh, his kind of, you know, coming to Jesus m moment as like a father. Oh, that's cool. I like the little subtitles there for uh, the language, uh, you know, Marquishan. I wonder if we'll get to see Jamon Saord in this episode. He's so glorious, man. God damn it, Gilmore. 
Yeah, again, so Ripley, like, proliferates guns throughout the world, but ultimately it is Percy's fault because he invents it, right? Oh, that's a sick scene. I love that with the shadows. So that is, like, that's, like, the thing, right, about Percy's guilt with the firearms is, it, you know, it, it's like what she says. Basically, it turns any common person into a warrior. The amount of death spread because of Percy's invention of, you know, the firearm in this world. And ultimately, that's like on him and on his conscience and very much affects his character. Even, you know, later on post campaign one, when we see Percy, you know, pop up again. It, Percy is very much like kind of defined by this choice that he made, this choice for revenge that ultimately led to you know, the spread of basically death-killing machines throughout the entire world. And and I just love it. Again, Percy is the best boy. He has the best story. I love my edgy boy, Percy. She's letting him go. Oh, she needs his help to build. Oh, they're going to use the vestige as a power source. Okay, that makes sense. To channel into what, though, is the question. Oh, I'm back. So I was going to sleeve skate. <laughs> I love the twins' chemistry, man. Laura and uh, Laura and Liam are so funny, man. I love their chemistry. It's so good. Um, gosh, I miss the twins. I miss the twins. Oh, it's Matt! It's Matt again! I forgot that Matt's Dr. Dranselman. Dude, Matt's singing voice, low-key, pretty good. Like, low-key, pretty good. Why, why do these people have to be so freaking talented, man? Cabal's ruined! That's what it's called. I could not remember for the life of me in the first episode reaction. It's Cabal's Ruin. Okay, so they're going to use the vestiges as batteries to create the weapons, I, I guess, is the idea. And it's sad because ultimately this happens regardless. As soon as that first person makes the first pepper box, it's basically over. Like, the, the guns will proliferate at some point. Mm -hmm. Taste of Tal'Dorei! Oh! Pocopy! Chetney's! This is a Chetney work, bro! It says Pockapee right there! Oh my god, little Campaign 3 reference, Chetney Pockapee? What other references? Okay, we got Taste of Tal'Dorei reference from Campaign 3. This skull, I think, is a reference to the skull that was in um, uh, Campaign 1, the skull that they all fight over. I think that's what that's supposed to be a reference to. It could be a reference to something else that I'm just not knowing off the top of my head. Uh, dream, two tickets to Dreamscape. I don't know exactly what the Dreamscape is, uh, referencing right there. Let me know in the comments down below on my other Critter fans. It's not coming to me off the top of my head. My Critical Role lore prowess is currently letting me down right now, but it is, like, really early in the morning, so I hope you'll forgive me. But we got the Chetney Pocket Pete work right there. That's awesome. Uh, love me, my boy, Chetney. You know we part of the Chetney fan club out here. Man, I can't even imagine what other freaking Easter eggs I've missed so far. What is this? Kids playing with guns? So guns already have gotten that popular, so these kids are literally playing with fake toy guns when Percy literally invented the first one like only eight years prior to this. I love these moments from Grog, man. These like moments of like smartness from Grog where he can like relate to other people, right? He'll race to like kids and stuff. <laughs> And then again, he acts like a child again. It's so funny, man. I love Grog. I love the way that Travis plays Grog. He, like, really threads this line of, like, a low-int character super, super well. Uh-oh. Guys, it's the 5-0. It's not looking good. <laughs> Classic Vox Machina. Always running away from their problems, man. They do a really good job in capturing just how much of a cluster f Vox Machina is as a party. Gilmore, no! So freaking glorious, my boy Gilmore. Oh no, Gilmore. Gilmore taking the fall. So I'm pretty sure they're going to get captured, probably, and uh, pre be presented to Jamon Saord, if I had to guess. You're not making this easy on me, are you? Scanlan, you're a sh dad, man. I'm sorry. You're just not a good dad, are you? All this way for me. Well, yeah. <laughs> Scanlan lies. Classic Scanlan. Just a little lie. Little lies are okay, though. Oh, and Scanlan's gonna have to leave. Because Scanlan's always, you know, Scanlan has commitment issues, right? Uh, and then obviously Kaylee has uh, very severe abandonment issues, uh, which is completely understandable because, you know, Scanlan abandoned her. He didn't know she existed, but, you know, Scanlan's not a good person. He's pretty shit dad. Um... 
our boy Scanlan. So I really love uh, Scanlan's story arc as well. Uh, over campaign one, you know, this kind of like uh, turn from this, you know, you know, sexual, like just over sexualized bard into like a responsible father, but still keeping his, you know, like roguery about him the entire time. Uh, I love Scanlan. I love Scanlan's uh, story. And I think that they do a pretty good job in, you know, kind of displaying that so far over Legend of Vox Machina, you know, from season one after then meeting Kaylee and then now. He made a bomb. He made a bomb. That's what he did. Yep, I knew it, dude. I knew. <laughs> Classic Percy. I made a bomb, guys. Dude, Orthax looks so sick. Ripley Giga Strong. From the skies. The Ripley mini boss. Oh, that's sweet. Little Vex Percy. Oh, my heart. My cold, icy heart. It's warm. Get her ass, boys. Blap, 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 blap. Oh, shit. Vex down. Vex down. Save her ass, Pike, please. She's hit. Medic. Oh. No. Okay, so yes, they do get captured. Jamon saw Ord. Jamon saw Ord. Jamon saw Ord. Silver dragon. Bronze dragon. Dragon, dragon. Off the dragon. Dragon ball Z. Oh, Scanlan. Always trying to do two things at once, man. He can't make his mind up. God, he's such a shit dad. He's such a shit dad. Jamon saw Ord. Jamon saw Ord. Dude, the animations. Again, I know I've talked, I've said this many times. I'm just gushing over the animations, but gosh, they look so good. I don't know if it comes over on my uh, recording software, but like, man, it looks good. Mmm. Primeval awareness. Here he is, boys and girls. The beautiful man. Gosh. Oh, my king. My boy, Jamon Saord. Oh my gosh. Keyleth, no. <laughs> Keep with always making things worth, man. That's a sick scene. I love the reflections. And you, carrying a custom black powder weapon. The exact kind used to oh, no. That alone is Oof, yes. The only, like, three guns in existence, and Percy has, like, two of them. Because he... He invented the weapon that got her killed. Damn, Percy. Percy out here really on his Jesus arc right now. I don't remember this in the campaign, guys. I, I don't think that Percy does that in the campaign. I could be wrong, though. Oh, she's got his big ass tankard. That was a reference to Sam. That that had to be a reference there to Sam Regal. And, you know, obviously the actor who plays Scanlan and his massive tankard that he used to have at the Critical Role table. I, I refuse to believe that that's not a reference. I'm your father. <laughs> Oh, God damn it, Scanlan. You're the worst dad ever. Oh, my God, Scanlan. Oh, gross. Gross. <laughs> Guys, what have you been up to? I just was trying to talk to my uh, my daughter. Now I'm passed out in a pool of my own vomit. <laughs> oh, gonna turn him into... What is this storyline? Okay. I don't remember this in campaign one. I feel like this was a changed part of the storyline, but uh, what do I know? I do not remember. I do not think this happened in campaign one. If I remember correctly, they had to do a test with Jamon Ward and they passed it. Yep. A little Phoenix Wright reference. Obviously, Scanlan as well as a lawyer. Objection! Your evidence? I have new eminence. <laughs> <laughs> Burt Reynolds persona. Hooray! No more banned. Hooray! You know, they could have just cast a Zone of Truth spell and it would have been way easier. But, you know, this works too. Aw, Scanlan actually sit coming through and saving the day at the end, you know? Even when he's always such a fuck up. Gosh, look at that scene of On Corral, man. That looks beautiful. Again, how many times do I have to say it? The animations in this show are fantastic. Yup, Percy dealing with the... You know, his sins of creating firearms. Percy is just a, a, a just river of guilt. Kiss. 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 
Oh. That would be true if she had actually stolen the plate of the gone monk. Got him. Double, double cross. So this is how they go to hell. Yes. Jaman saw Ord. Big brain. Five head. Then hell's hell? The hell. Bell's hells. The plate is with a demon called Xerxes Ilares. Mm-hmm. Antiquities collect in the city. Xerxes? Wait. Did she? Did he say? Am I? Am I tripping here? That was it. Exu calamity. Xerxes. There's no. He did not say that. What? Excuse me. Hold up, is that new? Was it always with Xerxes? Am I tripping here? Hold up, hold up. Xerxes Ilares, Luis Carousel. Yes, played by Luis Carousel, human paladin of Avalir, who ultimately wields uh the the mace. Yo, what? Xerxes becomes a demon in calamity when he wields the mace of the Black Crown from, um, from freaking uh Asmodeus. What the hell, man? That, okay, that had to be changed. I, I, there's ain't no way that was Xerxes in campaign one. That's gotta be a change they made. And what a f epic change it is. Uh, if you've not watched uh, EXU Calamity and you're a fan of Critical Role or even just a fan of DND in general, what are you doing? EXU Calamity might be the best ever like Dungeons and Dragons miniseries ever. It's lit. It's that freaking good. Uh, wowzers, my brain is absolutely cooked from that, uh, that little lore drop there. Oh my god. I was not expecting to get an EXU Calamity reference in my Legend of Vox Machina. It was so subtle, but there it was. As well, we got the reference to Campaign 3, you know, Chetney Pockapi, a bunch of other references, little Easter eggs and stuff. I'll probably try to do an Easter egg video over, uh, Legend of Vox Machina that I'll maybe try to release later, uh, next week, so keep your eyes out for that. Um, and yeah, that was Legend of Vox Machina, uh, episode two. Let me know your thoughts in the uh, comment section down below. Again, if you did enjoy the video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to check out some of my other uh, Critical Role, Legend of Vox Machina, d, &D content, my, my reaction for episode one. Um, and yeah, uh, this show is great. I am uh, very much looking forward to the rest of this season. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Until next time, stay safe out there. Peace. Love. Hadu.